Humans as a species need more in life than just food, water, and sleep. So imagine if everything besides those things gets taken away. I'm talking no cell phones, games, music, TV, books, animals, or computers. No beaches, no plane trips, no parties or birthdays, and certainly no alcohol. All you have left is a toilet, a sink, a bed, basic small meals, one hour outside, and 23 hours spent inside a five by nine foot room. This, my friends, is solitary confinement. You might be scratching your head at the term solitary confinement. And truthfully, it's not a pretty thing, but neither is prison. You might have learned about the roughness and toughness of prison in a show like Orange is the New Black. Any bad or misbehaving inmate would go to a place called SHU. That's what they call solitary confinement. And no, SHU is not something that goes on your feet. It stands for Special Housing Unit. And yeah, it is a special place. A special place in hell if you get locked in there. If all this sounds as unpleasant to you as it does for the ladies of Litchfield Penitentiary, Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for ways to avoid ending up alone in SHU. So, what is SHU? Well, it's a place that a prisoner will go if they misbehaved, like attacking a guard or inmate, if they're deemed dangerous, or to protect inmates from the other prisoners. This includes pregnant women, the mentally ill, and juveniles. In 2017, it is estimated that a whopping 61,000 Americans were held in solitary confinement. Since so many people are experiencing this on a daily basis, maybe we should all learn a little bit more about how it works. Well, like we said before, 23 hours of the day is spent in a small cell. The largest these cells have gotten is 8 by 10 feet. Let's compare that to the average bedroom size in the US, which is 14 by 16 feet. That's almost double, and remember, this is just one room. People out of prison usually have a whole house to stretch out in and can actually, you know, go places. During that extra one hour of the day, the prisoner is let outside, but usually in a space just as small as the cell. The room comes with a cot, a toilet, and a sink. They don't even get a window. For those with seasonal affective disorder, you know how hard it is to have less sun in the wintertime. Imagine having no sun all day long. In fact, all of these aspects can really affect a person physically and psychologically. Let's look at some of those effects. Isolation panic, anxiety, depression, you start to question who you are and even if you exist. Hallucinations, sensitivity when you get back to social situations or big open spaces, a pessimistic attitude, psychosis, or self-harming thoughts or actions. It even affects your hippocampus, which is the part of the brain that deals with memory. Who knew that being stuck in a small room all day can affect how well you remember things? But truth is, you're not really getting much stimulation or new experiences. It's not all just in your head though. Solitary confinement increases your ability to get sick. All these effects are reasons that some people campaign against it. Some people also say it's extremely misused. Take Anthony Gay's case. He was a man that went to prison for stealing one dollar. Because of bad behavior though, his sentence was extended quite a bit. He ended up spending 24 years in prison and 22 of those years were spent in solitary confinement. He said it made him feel like he wasn't human anymore. Upon his freedom, he campaigned against solitary confinement. Him and the other campaigner's efforts have started working. In Colorado, you can't be put into solitary confinement for more than 15 days. And now in some states, it's illegal to put someone with mental issues in shoe. Let's also look at Albert Woodfox. He was held in isolation for four decades. During that time, he had two trials that proved him guilty. Woodfox's original sentence was for the murder of a prison guard, but to this day, Woodfox proclaims that he's innocent. Woodfox also uses his newfound freedom to put an end to solitary confinement, and he's made a change. When in office, Obama put an act into motion to ban solitary confinement for minors. And more recently, Trump recently signed the First Step Act. These campaigners are truly making a difference. All in all, it sounds like society is taking the right steps into treating inmates with more respect. Now, maybe they don't deserve large, luxurious condos with a state-of-the-art gym, an Olympic-sized pool, or five-star restaurant-quality meals. But prisoners are human, and I think we can all agree that they should be provided with basic human needs. And maybe all of you should take advantage of your freedom. So go run in the rain, eat a dozen donuts, pet a thousand dogs. Just don't do anything illegal, because now you know exactly where that'll lead you.